Aries, thank you for tuning in to Perfectly Imperfect Tarot. This is Green Eyes here with your reading. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Martians, Astronauts. Pick a nude. It does not matter to me. I love you all. Cross Watchers, I am a snitch. I'm telling you now. Please don't curse me in the comments. Love you too. Aries, this is a judgment-free zone, but you will hear the truth. There's no gender or age, only energy. You're going to hear me use terms he, she, her, him, they, them, it, heifer. Pay it no mind. Feel the energy. Remember, roles can always be reversed. Aries, I thank you. Like, share, subscribe. Emails, comments, love tokens, donations. Thank you so very much for your support of the channel. All right, my love. Let's talk about your energy. I have to say, I had to uh, kind of woosah a little bit coming into uh, your energy. I was a little angry or frustrated. And I feel like it's coming from <sighs> knuckleheaditis. Okay? I just think somebody then caught a case of knuckleheaditis. I think that somebody's head is so hard that it just don't matter what you do or say, they're so defiant. You know, when you're trying to simply guide or assist, all right? So granted, I know you're like, all right, whatever, just go ahead and trip and fall. I, I warned you. At the same time, it's like whatever they're doing, it still impacts you. So let's just, uh, given a scenario with this energy, it's kind of like a uh, coworker don't want to listen to what you're trying to show them the job. They don't want to listen, but this is an assembly line and you're after them. So not only now do you have to do your work, you have to fix what they're doing wrong because they don't know how to listen. Do that make sense? That's how I feel in your energy. I feel like somebody is literally uh, def just being defiant and I'm not sure if they're willfully ignorant or if they're just trying to piss you off. But either way, I'm pissed off. <laughs> I ain't lying. I'm feeling this energy like, God darn. But okay. You know, here we go. We're pulling from the angels and ancestors because sometimes you just need God to step in and say, you know, all right, Aries, calm down. It's okay. You know, we just need that little extra love, that extra comfort, and that extra guidance. Let me have Aries, please. Yeah. <laughs> My stomach. It literally said a direction guardian, and it's coming in reverse because somebody don't know how to follow directions. I'm trying to tell you, Aries, y'all think I'd be crazy. <laughs> the energy is so, it's so, like, I know, of course, every Aries um, is not going to resonate with this, but I feel like a lot of your energy right now is just in some kind of defiance like i feel so um oh like a teenager that's just rebelling you know uh, this energy that you're dealing with right now and it's either you or it's very very close to you i'm telling you like if this was an assembly line this is the person that the product gets to first and you still got to deal with this foolishness so you know I also said I pulled these angels and ancestors because sometimes certain things in our lives, it just take God to calm us down. It take God to pull us in. You know, we're all growing um, emotionally and, and logically, physically, what have you. But sometimes God knows his people and he really, he will, he will send the angels and, and, and like, look, go get Aries for they get themselves into something that they can't get out of. And I'm really have to get involved here. <laughs> I love it. The broken arrow is coming in, really representing peace. I'm not fighting this anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I am, I'm not fighting this battle anymore. That's what this is. I'm claiming my peace. I'm taking it. Okay. I'm, uh, you can call it what you want. What I'm do not doing is giving this any more energy. And it's kind of like, that's what you, you're going to start doing. You're going to start saying, listen, I know me. Okay. I, I don't even care about this anymore. I know me. So I know what's the best thing for me to do is tap out. That's the best thing for me to do. That's going to best. That's the best thing for this situation is to tap out and the hunter coming in behind that because it Aries, if you're tapping out of foolishness, then f let, why not focus on, you know, positive things, right? 
Are you getting away from foolishness? That's when you say, I'm gonna get on my grind and work on my project. I'm gonna work on my coins or I'm gonna direct my attention to my family or my, my companion, whatever. Your heart's desire. You tap out of foolishness and you're really gonna start, you're on the hunt now to track down whatever you know that desire is for you okay or whatever it is that you want even if it's meat and potatoes you know even if you're trying to let's say track down the root cause of trauma you're still going to hyper focus on that you're just going to really put your eye on the prize the ego is coming in giving you higher perspective so that you can have the understanding that you're looking for so lovely 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 energy but ooh, I, I i have to admit i just wasn't expecting coming into that. Hold on. Let me grab a deck, y'all. Oh, okay. We're going to do vision quest today for your spread and see if we can get some more details and guidance and get to the meat and potatoes, man. You know, I love me some meat and potatoes. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of what's really going on here outside of somebody having knuckleheaditis, okay? Can I have uh, the core for Aries? What's that? This? Okay. The moon, meat and potatoes, and the vision quest, perspective, understanding, another view. Yeah, um, the moon is Piscean energy, also Scorpion. Uh, very strong energy by way of um, intuitive gifts, dreaming, uh, by way of uh, manifesting, okay? And also it's a very purging energy. It's an energy of cleansing, all right? Because I'm trying to, like I said, get down to the meat and potatoes. Um, I want my peace. I'm going to start searching for it. That was the line of um, with the oracles, right? Because it just seems like something is just not going right right. It's not listening. It's not the way it's supposed to be. So when you deal with the moon, the moon represents things that in life we kind of brush under the rug. I'll deal with that later. I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm not even thinking about that. I don't even care no more. Those things add up over time and the moon takes care of it for you energetically. But whenever you're getting ready to step into a new chapter or a cycle in life or elevation, even level in life, um, the moon requires a purge because it fills with that whatever you uh, hid behind it or swept under the rug during that chapter. So these are the things that, that I think is just being addressed either externally or internally or, or even both. OK, uh, what we have here, double Pisces, by the way, you might have heavy Pisces in your chart. Matter of fact, wasn't y'all dealing with a Pisces last year? Come to think of it, a lot of y'all was dealing with a Pisces last year. Yeah. Um, so that that energy just might still the remnants of it, or you still you just might be putting your foot down. Anyway, hangman energy here, perspective, understanding, looking through divine eyes, not your carnal eyes, but divine eyes. And that's how I felt like when we did that assembly line thing. It's like you had to look at it through a divine eye, saying, Oh, uh, this person as operating in a form that only God can help them. No matter how much I try to say, do it this way, they have to actually seek the knowledge and understanding. I realize that now, so I'm gonna remove myself from this equation because obviously I'm not your assigned teacher. That's how a divine uh, teacher looking through divine eyes would see that perspective. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that is gonna allow you uh, motion in your life, movement in your life, chariot energy right behind that with Cancerian energy uh, to go ahead and um, move forward with whatever it is that you're seeking. The same thing with the oracles. You'll start tracking down your desires, your fears, or your meat and potatoes, whatever it is. But you get this chariot like, hey, you're now you're ready. I'll take you to where you want to go. Okay, so let's crown this energy, see what's going on. What's hanging over Aries' head? right now what's crowning this energy please and thank you ah lovely 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 look at the sun and then i have the six of fire which is six of wands victory and success okay so what's crowning you the sun the happiest card in the deck 
the brightest card, okay? The sun is enlightenment, understanding, epiphanies, the aha moment. That's what you're you're dealing with. That's what's going to make you say, I, I, um, I tap out, you know? This enlightenment, you're going to pull down from that sun and say, I get it now. I really do get it, okay? My victory and success, my accolades, my acknowledgement is from me putting an end to this, a stop to this, because the six of wands is the parade after the game, when the game is over, you know? So this enlightenment will be, you you won. So in the game, you with me? All right, let's see. What's in the way for Aries? What's work? Ah, Aries, <laughs> father of fire. You know, Aries, it's just natural. You're a born leader. You know, it's natural for you to want to uh, have, uh, how can I say that? It's natural for you to want to have somebody learn, understand, and grow and prosper. You know, it's the natural leader in you that you can't help that. That's just a part of your fire. It's a part of your passion. The thing about it is that sometimes the natural leader in you, it conflicts with the natural um focus that you normally have in this king energy because the king is very very focused on an agenda you know on a on a goal okay um on an accomplishment and their confidence knows going in that just because I'm here and I'm doing it, I know it's already done. It's already won. All right. So the fact that you're tapping out of foolishness, um, is number one. It's like, you're going against your grain. Cause you, you really know if you dub, if you dig deep, you can, you can deal with the situation. The thing about it is, it's not that you can't do it. It's, it has to be, you have to have the realization. Like I said, that you're going to do it by tapping out. This is something that you have to give to God, you know, because somebody is very, very, I mean, they have knuckleheaditis. It, I don't know how else to say it. They just have knuckleheaditis. So it's like one way you're looking at, you have knuckleheaditis. I don't want no parts of this. You're going to drive me and you crazy and you messing up my flow, you know? And then on, if there's a piece of you saying, man, I'm trying to help you get it together. Like, all you got to do is A, B, and C, and then we can take it from D and take it all the way to Z. And bah, bah, bah. Like, you're trying to put them on game and you're trying to back off at the same time. So basically, it creates kind of an inner conflict. That's how you kind of work against yourself because it's almost as if you're, because you're being divinely guided to do something that's not your nature, which is tap out. That's not your nature. But this time it's required because you're in the middle or you're working on something that's not your assignment. You understand what I'm saying? It's just simply, it may be, if it was your assignment before, you've completed your, your part. So now it's time to back off, okay? And there's your elevation, that growth, shaman coming in with the king. That's why you kind of been stuck a little bit lately because you've been trying to figure out why maybe you can't get your your work is not being inspect your your work is being inspected on the assembly line and they they blaming you not knowing that it's knuckleheaditis that's giving you half work you know which is making you work harder work longer you know uh break it down and put it back together just to do your part things like that you know what i mean where's this coming from for aries please and thank you and guys, remember, this is energy, so you have to take it how it resonates. And this is coming from the 10 of Earth, lovely. So this is definitely work-based or family-based, okay, this energy. And it looks like in the past, you really had a nice flow. You had a good, uh, secure hold on things, abundance in all areas of life. But it was still stressful because I think over time, you started realizing like, yeah, I have all this, but... It's really my labor and it's supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be a shared responsibility. This assembly line has multiple people 
and everybody's supposed to focus on the task at hand. But in the past, even though I did have a nice hold on things and I was getting things together, you know, it's starting to get stressful now because, you know, you know, it's like after I can hold you for so long, I can carry you for so long. Eventually you got to walk on your own, you know, or you've built this, um, lovely abundant life. And then it became worrisome or stressful because you feel like you dealing with the one that got away, you know, with that moon. All right. So let's see where this is going, Aries. Future energy. Please and thank you. And if you're one of the ones that are processing the one that got away or the situation that got away, what would be working against you is your ego. Okay. I just want to put that out there. I love you. We ain't gonna tell nobody. That's between us. You you know we talk here, okay? Future energy. I have the hermit, and then I have the seven of wands. Yeah, because you're gonna take a stand, and you're gonna kind of just be more wiser uh, with your actions. The hermit is wise, not simply because he's really smart. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of smart people in the world, but we all don't do what we know is right to do. You know, I'm just saying, okay? Um, the hermit been through some things, yes, and did pick up some lessons and some blessings. But to actually operate in this Virgo energy, it's um, not just knowing. It's number one, doing what you know is right. It's actually applying the knowledge, not just having the knowledge, but it's the application of the knowledge as well as following divine guidance. You understand? So the endurance, the seven of wands that comes behind that, it's like, I know what to do. I'm going to fight for my right to party because I know I'm being, being divinely guided to kind of step off on my own and pursue uh, my next chapter, my dream, my goals, my desires, and things like that. And it's, it's going to be a great move for you, daughter of fire coming in. So you might be even, uh, it feels like a trip, actually. You might be getting ready to take a trip or a little weekend or something like that. Nothing major. Um, just to kind of love on yourself a little bit or maybe even extend or receive some love. But basically what you're trying to do is make peace with life. You're trying to, this is temperance energy. And I love the way that they have this picture because there's an, it's referred to as an integration. In the traditional tarot, you would see an angel halfway through the journey. And then that uh, angel uh, replenish you a bit so that you can complete the journey. But with this deck, I like it because there, midway th through the journey, there's an integration, meaning that there's an understanding of past, present, and future coming into play that gives you that OMG, okay? So it's kind of like one of those movies where you get a little piece of the end in the beginning of the movie, and then you got to watch the whole movie to kind of understand what that beginning part was. And then when you get towards the end, it'll take you back to where the, you were when you started, and you start putting it to OMG. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's a beautiful, beautiful, energy. So this understanding is now going to kind of like be that symphony that's coming together beautifully for you because now you get it. Now, what are you going to do with it? That's when you're going to need that hermit. Tap into that. Don't stay here too long. Now, I do like the inner peace that you get from the knowledge, but it's still going to require some type of action, some type of decision, some type of movement, okay? Because sitting in two of air for too long, that's kind of like those places in life where you're like, all right, God, I don't know what to do here. You you tell me what to do and I'll just do what you say, you know? But that's not how free will works, you know? Sometimes we're going to make a choice and it's going to be the wrong one. Sometimes it's going to be the right one. Sometimes it'll be the wrong one and you still get by, but you had to do it the wrong way to understand why it was wrong so that when you know you face it again, you won't do it again. So, it, you know, that two of your energy, it's a blessing and a curse because it allows you inner peace because of your uh, connection to the most high. But it takes away from one of the uh, first gifts that you get from the most high, which is free will. You understand? So 
if you move through this, you can actually make a great connection with this two of cups coming in. So this is either friends coming together, somebody that understands, somebody wants what you want. They want to go where you want to go. They think like you think. They feel like you feel. It's something you can pour into and they can pour into you. Or this is yourself uh, really aligning with um, even uh, ancestors or angels on the other side that may be assisting you in your journey. Even, whatever it is, it's an exchange so that you can now operate in your full potential and power with that emperor coming through, which is going to be nothing but balance for you, which is great. It's justice. It's balance. You know, everything is as it should be and anything that isn't is nothing that can't be rectified or addressed. You understand? This is a tangible blessing for you that's coming in because of the growth that you're coming into knowing thyself. This is absolutely bomb.com. Guys, and it's going to take just a small effort, but you can mess it up if you self-sabotage and get stuck in your head too long and try to carry something that's not yours because you're fighting against what you know you're being led to because you think you're in confusion or illusions or you think that um, something will be better or I might have better later. You understand what I'm saying? Don't fool yourself. Let's close this chapter. Okay, let's close this chapter. Let's begin anew from a place of righteousness and integrity, knowing that you did what you were supposed to do and you're just waiting for the ships to come on in. All right? All right, Aries, I hope this helps. Now, if any event you say green eyes, listen, I don't even know you. All right, you don't know me. This is not my life. I'm okay with that. Please check your moon, check your rising. Don't take this energy if it's not yours. Leave it here for someone else, okay? Everybody, thumbs up, subscribe. Make sure you guys are notified of future readings. It's free and it supports the channel, all right? If you're interested in a personal appointment, you may email me, perfectlyimperfecttarot at gmail.com. And guys, remember, we are all perfectly imperfect. And I'll talk to you next time.